where you think Myers was involved. Oh, he says he wants to spill the beans, and the next thing you know, he's getting his neck stretched. It sure sounds like he was involved to me. Yeah, but we don't know that for sure yet. Hey, what's the news? The news is not good. Just got word from forensics, and it's official. Everyone's favorite pedophile, Raymond Myers, died by his own hand. But Laura said it looked like foul play was involved. Something about his upper abdomen being bruised. It was indicative of his neck being broken beforehand. Indicative, but not conclusive. So you don't believe he was murdered? Raymond Myers was a pedophile looking to spend the rest of his life in jail. I think he took the easy way out. But it's still a maybe. A big one. Now, look, guys, I hate to bring this up, but uh, our budget is way out of control this year, and the guys upstairs are not very happy. Andy, these cases take time to build. It's a loaded one. I know that. But until we find a bad guy who's still breathing, they want me to shut it down. That's bullshit. Relax, it's not going to happen. But we don't have the time or money right now for all hands on deck. Are we all agreed on that? I've been spending 10 hours a day on this case. We all have. Well, what do you think? Do you think we should keep the whole squad on this case? No. I agree with you. Come on, Allie. Look, Mickey, we've been going in circles on this. And you know what? Until we get something new, I'm getting off this merry-go-round. That's it. Uh -huh. Here you go. It's a fingerprinting kit. I borrowed it from my dent, so don't lose it. I won't. Because if you do, the entire Vancouver Police Department is going to be after you. Oh, right. Like, I believe that. But don't worry, I'll take good care of it. Good. Thanks, babe. What? Babe? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought I heard. Uh, kind of hope I don't hear that again. Okay. Yeah, I just, you know, those nicknames, uh, Honey Bunch, Sweetie Pie, uh, Babe. Uh, kind of want to draw my weapon when I hear that one. Ooh, wow. Understood. Well, I hope I haven't offended you too much. I still would like to get my uh, goodbye smooch. Oh, well, I think that can be arranged. Oh, good. Is that just my corner? Uh, Ivan. <laughs> wow. What, uh, how are you? Uh, uh, what brings you to Vancouver? Business or pleasure? Well, Vancouver is a front town. I usually try to fit on both. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Vanessa, this is Ivan. Hi. Hello. Uh, Privyat. Oh, I'm Gabriel Tiporovsky. Ah. Actually, sorry, I just know hello. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> so, uh, your business involves Cold Squad? Yes. Interesting. Ah. Okay. You know, we're gonna go. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. It was uh, nice to meet you. Ivan. Dan. Dan. Is he a police officer? No. I didn't think so. No. So. So. Weird about Allie, huh? How do you mean? About Hamilton. How she just decided to walk away. She's taking a break. It's a different thing. You agree with her? <laughs> Is everyone going nuts here? We're finally getting close, and everyone's just going to jump ship. Close to what? Tell me, which one of these people killed Billy Wells and Michelle Ripley? Who's your primary? Well, there's a number of them in the running. That doesn't make us close unless some living, breathing victim walks in here and tells us who did it. We're never going to know. Quitter? Oh, yeah, name-calling. That'll, that'll work. You know, it might just be a smarter play going after something we can actually close. <laughs> like your Jane Doe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wasted a year and a half on that. It's something I don't plan on doing again. And this is... The Iskra. The letters of Vladimir Lenin. They were banned by Tsar Nicholas II in 1901. 
They only surfaced after the revolution. You know, to call these letters priceless would be to demean them. Well, thank you very much for the history lesson, but what does it have to do with you, me, or Vancouver? The letters in the picture are not real. They are forgeries. The truth is, the Iskra letters were stolen in 1996. We believe they were taken from the Hermitage by two gentlemen, Nikolai Androvsky and Ilya Voltek. Again, what does this have to do with me? This is Ilya Voltek. But you know him by another name. Carl Grindon? Yeah. He was murdered in Vancouver in 1996. Only recently did we find out from our operatives that Ilya was using that name as an alias. So how does this get you to the Iskra? We believe Ilya was killed by his partner, Nikolai. And we think Nikolai is still here with the Iskra. So how do we find it? Or him? We've heard reports. The Iskra is going up for auction in a couple of days. When that happens, Nikolai will reveal himself. So if we work together on this, we both win. I get the Iskra you solve a cold case. So, will you help me? Sure. Great. We start tonight. Meet me in my hotel lobby at 8 p.m. And dress nicely. See ya. See ya. So I've been looking around and I don't see any letters. What is it we're looking for exactly? Not what? Who? You see that man over there? His name is Harvey Moore. He has more than one country's history locked away in his private collection. If he's here, he may be bidding on the letters. Let's go say hi. Okay. Hello, Harvey. Good to see you again. Ivan Ilyich, always a pleasure. I'm not familiar with your companion. This is Alan McCormick. This is McCormick. Pleasure. Hi. So, Ivan, what brings you here? The same thing that brings you? The Iskra. The Iskra? Aren't they with the Hermitage? Yes, of course they are. When is the auction taking place? Uh, in about half an hour, I believe. I meant the real auction. <laughs> the Russians. I don't believe they met a race more prone to conspiracies and intrigues. Harry, why would you be here if the Iskra was not for sale? Vancouver's getting quite a reputation for its restaurants. I thought I'd try a few. No, if you excuse me, Mr. McCormick. It's here. What makes you so sure? Because he is here. If Harvey Moore is not here to purchase the Iskra himself, he will be involved in the sale. This is good. No, but I don't see the Iskra here. He wouldn't. They would never display it publicly. So what do we do now? Well, good question. How about have some champagne and see what value is attached to priceless items? How's that sound? It sounds good. Cheers. Thank you. Would you like 
life can up for a drink? I I can't. I'm driving. Well, you only have to drive if you decide to leave. Ivan, we're working a case. I seem to recall we were working a case last time. I know, but it's different now. Different? How? Just different. Good night. Good night. I'll I had a great time. Really? Great time? I thought we were just working a case. Good night. Hello, Ellie. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Vanessa has something to tell you. I'm sorry, but um, I lost the fingerprint thing you gave me. Everyone thought it was really cool, so I let this guy look at it, and he took off with it. Right, specifically after Ellie asked you not to lose it, to be careful. It's okay. And, and not to lose, and I think she should have been more careful. Dan, it's okay. I... McCormick. Hi. Yeah, uh... Do you want to meet me in the parking garage? That's good. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye. Anyway, I thought that we should come up with our punishment together. Dan, really, it's okay. I don't care. No, it's important. I think that... You know what? I haven't got time for this right now. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm busy. We have an operative who has been watching the internet. The Iskra is going to be sold soon. How soon? Within 48 hours. And Vancouver has been confirmed as the site of the exchange. Do we know who the purchaser is yet? Harvey Moore's name had been mentioned. It's open. Well, this should be a slam dunk. Excuse me? Slam dunk. It's like a... Forget it. <laughs> what is it exactly I'm looking at here? Read these two letters and tell me if you don't find something strange. These are Michelle Ripley's letters. We went through these. Not very well. Okay. What am I supposed to be looking for? Harper, okay. Look at this. Dated November 3rd, 1987. Mm -hmm. Now listen to how it sounds. Things aren't getting any better here. Me and Billy are fighting. He's always getting in trouble and just making things worse. I feel bad because it's my fault he's stuck in here, but at the same time, I'm happy that he is. I know that's really selfish, but I love him so much, and I don't know what I'd do if he wasn't in here with me. Okay, so? Okay, so now this one, dated November 10th, 1987. Uh, Billy and I are still fighting, but like I said, I'm glad he's in here because I think I would go crazy if he wasn't. I guess it's just something I'm going to have to learn to live with. I do love him and would hate it even more if he wasn't here. I guess other than that, not much else is new. Not much of a wordsmith, is she? It's virtually the same letter. Maybe things were getting routine. These kids were incarcerated. No, Harper, I don't buy it. The letters that are written prior to November 3rd, they're full of details, names, places, real stream of consciousness, 16-year-old girl stuff. After November 3rd, they're different. Anyone else know about these? Well, since everyone wants to bail on this case, no. So do you believe me? How many of these are there? A total of 40 written before Michelle's disappearance. Okay, then we're gonna need backup. I know a good linguist and letters person. You think Belichick will go for it? He's a reasonable man. So you're telling me you want to bring in some college schmuck on my dime to prove your conspiracy theories? She's one of the best analysts in the country. We used her during the Whelan investigation. You agreed that the Ambleton investigation could continue. This is the only place left to look. If we don't check this out, we're not doing our jobs. <laughs> you guys aren't gonna go away in this, are you? We owe them, Andy. Hey, Nico. Some guy in Lucka wants to talk to you. Yeah, tell him to take a number. His name's Andre. It's about a Billy, says you know her. Did he say anything else? Well, he said it's important. What's he in for? I have no idea. No one tells me anything.
<clears throat> so is it more by Nisgra? I don't know. He may just be the intermediary. I guess bringing Nisgra home would make you some kind of national hero. I already am. My own mind. <laughs> so, how have you been? Good. Good. You? Yeah, good. Who's this Dan? A friend. Just a friend? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. Then perhaps it's all his. How's it going? So, you like my girl, Billy? What do you want? What do you think? Out. Why should I do that? Well, wouldn't want all the rest of the cops you work with to find out about your new girlfriend. Do you think they'd believe a little shit like you? Do you know she was 18? I bet you did. You like him young, don't you, officer? You know, I'm only gonna keep my mouth shut for so long. Oh, hey, this looks promising. last I heard. We'd like an answer now. Only here a couple of days, Ivan. This is the best female companion you could drag up. Even watch your mouth. We're gonna talk, not you. Understand? Ivan, no, take it that? easy. Take it easy. So, Mr. Moore, would you like to come for a ride downtown? I don't suppose I have much choice, do I? No, I don't suppose you do. Michelle Ripley was a habitual letter writer. She started writing on August 4th, 1987, two days after she was admitted to Ambleton, and immediately she established a pattern. Two letters a week, always to her mother, always on a Remington 3B typewriter. Next transparency. What's with this? I'm not exactly sure, but it is significant. Uh, Michelle wrote a letter every third day and then every fourth day. Same every week. You see this date here? This is the only time during her entire stay at Ambleton that she deviated from that pattern and didn't send a letter. Maybe she just didn't feel like writing that day. It's possible, but habitual letter writers don't often break their habit unless their social parameters change. Ambleton was a jail, you know. It doesn't get much more routine than that. So you think this means something? I wouldn't give it much weight normally, but it's what happens after this letter that makes me think otherwise. Next. Now, this is a letter written on November 3rd. Have a careful look at the sentence structure. Looks pretty random to me. Some short, some long. Exactly. And notice the spelling of words like through and before. Maybe it was her prince period. Back when he still had a name, right? It's actually back now. Next. Now have a look at this one. See, the content seems similar, but it's clear that the sentence structure's changed. Yeah, all the sentences are the same length. Exactly. And note the correct spelling of through and before. Now, what's also curious is that letters dated after November 3rd shift in tone. Generally, when a person writes as many letters as Michelle did, you can monitor the subtle shifts in writing fairly accurately. Such a drastic shift is not normal. Now, also, take a look at this. Letters written after November 3rd are full of phrases that are well, they're outside the lexicon of a young girl. I mean, take this phrase, for example. Bob's your uncle. This is used six times after November 3rd, but not once before. Kids pick up new lingo. Well, that they do, Daddy-o. But I don't think I was using that phrase when I was growing up, and I'm about Michelle's age. Well, you see, that's the thing. Bob's your uncle dates back to 1887. It's an old British phrase referencing Lord Salisbury. It's an extremely odd reference for a 16-year-old girl. Maybe she heard it from her parents. 
They're American extraction. She might have, but I don't think so. We need to call the Ripley's and ask them if they ever use Bob's uncle. Okay. So, it doesn't look like Michelle wrote these letters. Mm-mm. I think they've been forged. Well, we wanted conspiracy theories. It looks like we got them. Yeah. Can I see the timeline again? Okay, so something probably started happening after November 3rd, and she wanted her mother to know about it. Exactly. My theory? She continued to write during the gap, but her letters were stopped at the source. It's good theory, but why wouldn't she just call her? Well, Ambleton would hold back phone privileges as a punishment. Yeah, but Michelle Ripley was an excellent student. I can't see her having a phone privileges denied. Well, looks like it's time to talk to someone who'd know. Yeah, I got an idea. Why don't we try this guy? I think I should do the questioning. No, it's my case. Our case, besides, I don't feel like bringing up on a police brutality charge. Oh, they insulted you. Ugh, I've had worse. Hey! Sorry to keep you waiting. You're suspected of a couple of pretty bad things here. One, theft of a protected historical document, and two, the murder of Ilya Voltok. What are you talking about? So, unless you start to cooperate, I'm going to apply for and get a search warrant for your home in New York. <laughs> Is there anything there that you don't want us to know about? You can't do that. My bet? You know, when it comes to matters of police business, both our countries have a pretty good relationship with the U.S., wouldn't you say, Ivan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, why was that case empty? I was a decoy, that's why. A decoy? The people selling this document, they know you're here. So where is the Eastern? My information is that it is going to be sold in Vancouver. It is, but not to me, and not by me. Then who? The purchaser is someone from Asia. And who is selling it? Nikolai Androvsky. And where's he? Search warrant? I don't know. Can you tell us where you're getting your information? If you know where Nikolai is, I think you'd better tell us now. I don't know anything about Nikolai. How long ago did you enter this country? I've been here for a long time. How did you get in? Yeah. I ran your name through immigration, and apparently you don't exist. So one of three things is going to happen here. You're gonna tell us where Nikolai is. You're gonna go back to Russia after having told us where Nikolai is. Or you and me and Ivan can go for a drive. And then you'll be begging to tell us where he is. So, it's your call. Nikolai is in Zurich. In the Eastern? With him. We were told that it's been sold, is that true? Y yes. Where and when is the transfer going to take place? Here, in Vancouver, tomorrow. Okay, thanks very much. Oh, just one more thing. Exactly where? Just a few more questions, Mr. Cage. So you're saying there were times when you withheld phone privileges? It was an effective and humane form of punishment. So good students got this as well. Intellect and virtue are by no means linked, Mr. Harper. Some of our brightest students were our worst perpetrators. What about Michelle Ripley? To tell you the truth, I barely remember her. But you recalled earlier how she escaped with Billy Wells. Quite true. But if you're asking me what type of person she was, I'm afraid I can't help. Did a lot of the students write letters? A fair number, yes. Is there ever a screen process for these letters? No. Although I did once catch a guard reading a girl's letter, he was dismissed immediately. Really? Why was he reading it? Perhaps he finished with the sports page. We've been reviewing some letters sent by Michelle Ripley, and uh, they seem to shift radically in tone after November 3rd. Is there anything that you remember happening around that time? Well, and I'm not even sure if this was the right year, but I do remember one October, a guard was attacked. So what happened? Harsher curfews, no recreation. We even canceled Halloween festivities that year. Might explain her shift in tone. Did this crackdown work? Personally, I think we overreacted. I have vague recollections of sitting alone in my office, staring at some cheesy paper skeletons we had taken down. Funny the things you remember. Look, if you have further questions, can we pick it up another time? I have a press briefing with Premier Steed in an hour. 
Yeah, yeah. We'll call you if we need you. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would love to go, Dan, but I, I can't. It's this case we're working in. We're getting close. Uh-huh. I'll call you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it might go down tonight. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye. So, your hotel? Why not? You're back. Yeah, I like that bunny rabbit. I just, just keep going and going and going. <laughs> we got a problem. What's that? Some guy in jail, Andre. He says he knows about us, and that if he doesn't get out, he tells. Let him out. Don't ruin your career because of me. I don't feel good about it. I think it's great that you like me, but don't lose your job. You're nothing on Cage, which leaves us with the letters. Which are forgeries? Well, some of them are. If we can separate the real from the fake, maybe we can find something. Unless you have a better idea. No. It's not an exact science. And since the same typewriter was used, I've had to base my assessment entirely on content. Take a look at this. It was written late in November, just before she disappeared. What's with the poetry diversions? Young people like to turn their letters into personal playgrounds. It's not unusual, really. Only thing that struck me as odd was this one. Top ten lists tend to be more of a guy thing. Oh, I used to do that. Oh, there you go. Watch it. Something strange here. Yeah? Yeah, look at the songs. You ever heard of any of these? I can't say I have. Well, her number one song, Love Shack, isn't that a B-52 song? Love Shack wasn't released till 1990. Eastern Wall. Driving straight through dirty trails. What are these, these directions? Is that her letter, or is this one of the fake ones? It appears to be from Michelle. Is it possible that she's communicating in code? Well, it's not uncommon for a teenager. Directions to where? Love Shack. Oh, I don't even want to know. Do you think this is real? Well, there's only one way to find out. We go back to where it all began. And it sounds like a lot of fuss over a couple of pieces of paper. Oh, they're more than paper. What do you think the Americans would do if someone stole the Constitution, for example? Mm. Don't you think there'd be a fuss? I suppose so. Yeah. What document does your country treasure? Oh, well, there's the, uh... <laughs> and then there's the, uh... <laughs> Hello, country. <laughs> I like it. Sorry. So, tell me about this, then. What is there to say? You say you care for him yet. Is it here with me? Why? Good question. When I found myself falling out of love with my wife, I discovered something. I never really loved her in the first place. It's too much of a coward to admit that. No. Not sure I'm ready to use the word love yet. Maybe never will be with him. Maybe you're right. Maybe I should go. Do you want to? No. Then don't. I think of you often. Crossed my mind once or twice. Crossed your mind. Is that all? So when I cross your mind, what are you thinking about? I think we should be having this conversation somewhere else.
Uh, we should probably get a move on if you want to get to the harbor. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know if you want to risk losing a national treasure so you can sleep in. I'll get some coffees and meet you at the car. This would have been the Eastern Wall, right near the basketball court. What's the second song? Driving straight through? Yep. Okay, I say we go this way. Lead on, Daniel Boone. Certainly looks like dirty trails to me. That it does, Miss Collender. That it does. This must remind you of high school. No, I was much more of a backseat of your car, girl. I'm guessing this is the Hobbit's mat. Yeah. Oh, we're getting close. Left or right? I say right. What about left? Yes, for my opinion, I say right. That's for your opinion? Yeah, I think you did. Holly. Oh, boy. Is that like Aaron Drosky? Oh. Well, hold up a second. That'd be the buyer. ourselves a love shack. No, we're alone. Easy there, Colander. Oh, come on. I was raised on craft dinner and gold stars. I'm a good Catholic girl. It's not what I heard. I pay those people. <laughs> it's empty. Wait, wait. Let's have a uh, crime scene look at it first, okay? No wonder they chose this place. Not a soul would have known about it. So, Nikolai, we have a problem, and I'm wondering if you can help me out. I'm listening. Problem is, Ivan. He wants you to go back to Russia. If you go there, you're going to be tried for stealing a national treasure, and the penalty for that is, well, death. Isn't it, Ivan? I think the method is firing squad. So, as you can see, that's not good. Mm -hmm. And how is this your problem? Well, I don't believe in capital punishment, so I'd rather not send you back there to meet your maker. I'd rather help you. Help me. How? You know him? Ilya Voltok, a.k.a. Carl Grinden. We don't have this conversation again, so you answer me or you're on the next flight. Do you know this man? Yes, I know him. Yes, so I guess you know what I'm going to ask you next. Yes. Good. Answer me correctly. This is what we like to call a life or death question. Did you kill him? Have you two gone nuts? How far are you gonna take this thing? I'm telling you, Andy, this is the place. This is what we've been looking for all year long. Something happened here in 1987. Something bad. Guys? I think I got something. So congratulations. Now you are a hero. Ah, uh, just another case. Well, Androsky fessed up, so he's looking at at least 25 years. Always a pleasure working with you, Sergeant McCormick. Who knows, maybe one day we will have the opportunity to do it again? Yeah, maybe. Of course, if we do, then we'll have to just be work. So, you love him. 
Hey, um, I need a visitor's pass. I'm here to see Sergeant Ali McCormick. Well, I haven't figured that out yet, but I'm pretty sure I want to. You back now? First and last favor. Oh, I'd like to show my gratitude. I don't need anything from you. Oh, really? We'll see about that. I got your toy. Tonight, for you, no charge. Hey, baby. Not interested. She's not a toy. Oh, that's where you're wrong. Huh? Baby, suck it. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's a good girl. You see, get that to surveillance. Now, you two have fun tonight. Okay? You said you could handle yourself. What are you doing? Huh? What are you? So I don't get it. She just up and left? Well, yeah. She uh, went to her friends. That's weird, though. I mean. Didn't she know I was coming over? She did. We were supposed to play Pictionary. Yeah. You know, she's been a little weird ever since she got back from the uh, police station. Police station? Yeah. Did you see her there? No. Well, that's funny. I guess she said she saw you. Smile. Why? I don't have anything. What are you talking about? We got a crime scene, a date, a potential piece of crucial evidence. Why are you so down on this? Well, I'm thinking about what you said. If we don't find an answer for this soon, this is all going to get buried with Bill Michelle. No, no, we're not there yet. Okay? Okay. I gotta go. You don't want to stick around for a little? Uh, nope. Daughter's got soccer. So just, just go home, get some rest. Okay? We'll get uh, get back in this again tomorrow. Harper. Thanks. You're sticking by me on this. Not a problem. Hey, Rick, can you turn that up? Thanks. Now, I was asked earlier if I could summarize our fiscal approach. Well, if you lower taxes, you stimulate the economy, and a stimulated economy means jobs, prosperity, and if everything goes according to plan, Bob's your uncle. Yeah.